a gamer's kamikaze. Okay, guys, everyone just calm down. Let's just take this one step at a time. I need you to understand that I understand that there's something inherently funny about a white conservative posting a video entitled The Truth About the N-Word, which is exactly why I did it. Now, that being said, I actually think I have some pretty reasonable takes on the N-Word, and so, you know, we should probably be talking about them since our country is such that simply saying the word when you're a teenager can ruin your life. And the point here is that most people would agree that you shouldn't be saying the N-Word, but if you're also gonna tell me that we can't even talk about it, well, I'm gonna take issue with that because there have been so many stories, like the one that we're going to talk about today where things happen that are just simply not okay and that wouldn't happen in a serious country. And for those not familiar, basically this teenage girl got her driver's license back in 2016. She sent a video to a friend via Snapchat in which she said, I can drive, N-word. And then this miserable, effeminate little bitch held onto that video for years before releasing it to the mob so that she would have her life ruined. And she ended up being disinvited from her university where she would have been on their cheer team, which was a dream of hers. And so we will discuss as a young middle-class white man, the political implications of the N-word, how properly understood this type of outrage is just a virtue signal, how white women are cringe, and my plan for how we can stop this type of stuff from happening in the future, so do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. I've decided to betray my former self. I have rejected the white man's focus on keeping a schedule, and for that reason, the much-anticipated anti-pornography dissertation is being pushed back a little bit yet again, and it's literally just because the more I've hyped it up, the more I realize that it has to be perfect, and so when it's perfect, it will be released. There's still a lot of research left to incorporate, plus I've been busy with Christmas, planning the Texas move, new studio, etc. So, you know, part of me wants to apologize for the delay, but the other part of me is inclined to think that if you're mad at me, it's just because you have a hard time delaying gratification because of low impulse control, because you watch pornography. So you should have just listened to me last year. I don't know. That's a joke. We'll get it out shortly. But it's also New Year's Eve. It's the end of the year. I want to have some fun. I want to go out with a bang. And what better way to do that than by literally making a video about the N-word? And again, as weird as it sounds, it's actually a political issue because by definition, anything that makes a claim about how society should function is political. And since there are people who celebrate when other people have their lives ruined for simply saying a word, we should probably talk about it. But I don't think that anyone else has the balls to talk about it. And so here we are. And by the way, if simply talking about the N-word, like not even saying it, but just talking about it. If that makes you uncomfortable or you don't think that we should be doing that, you're a coward. You're a coward and the mob isn't going to spare you. Even if you're a part of it, even if you agree with them, they'll get you too eventually. But before we get started, I just kind of have to establish myself a little bit here. Obviously, we have lots of black fans in the audience. Obviously, I've been given several dozen N-word passes throughout my life, but I just wanted to bring in someone to answer some questions before we dive into this. And I was going to introduce him with his credentials, but apparently all that matters to these people is literally just that he's a black guy. And so take a look. Donnie, thank you so much for being here with us today as we sort of explore this topic. I did want to get your input on a few questions before we move forward. Um, if at any point you feel as though the questions are, are too invasive, they're inappropriate, you don't feel comfortable answering, just please let me know. Totally at your discretion. Um, so the first question, uh, is it true that we ended racism? Yes. Okay. Am I racist? No. Okay. Is it possible for me to be racist? No. Okay. Who is less racist than me? That's a trick question. There's, there's no one less racist than you. Interesting, okay. Are the people who call me racist, are they just projecting their racism onto me? Oh, yes. Okay. Last question, Donnie. Who are the real racists? The Democrats. Wow. The Democrats are the real racists. That's incredible. Donnie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Very epic. We've got the green light. So we'll go through the story first and I'll kind of interject my takes as we go through it. But first, I'll give you my general take on the N-word. And I've always felt this way about it, which is that I don't think that people should say it. I just, I really don't think that people should say it. And that's just because it's a gross word. So I'm sorry to disappoint you if you thought that I was going to say it in this video, but I just, I don't think that people should say the N word or the C word because the former is a word that existed to extremely degrade human beings. And it's eternally symbolic of that. And the latter is a word that degrades the thing that creates human life. I just think that's wrong too. But the reason that this is important to discuss is because the commonly held belief is that you can only say the N word if you're black, which in practice means that you can only say it if you're not white, because for some reason, other minority groups can say it with impunity. And maybe they'll say, well, this is because white people uh, enslaved 
enslaved black people, which is true, but, you know, they were also enslaved by Hispanics. White people bought them from blacks who were already enslaving them. Like, the history kind of makes this complicated, but I get it, you know? I don't even think it matters that much. Like, when we're talking about, well, who gets to say the N-word? And it's like, who cares? The way I see it is that the word has a special connotation with black Americans that white Americans just don't understand because as much as we'd like to reject identity politics... It's simply a fact that the average black person and the average white person have completely different experiences in this country. And I'm not talking about racism. I'm talking about culture. And so in practice, black people use the N-word as an endearing term given their history and perceivably shared experience in this country, kind of like how, you know, Marines will call each other jarheads, which of course isn't as bad, but the principle is basically the same. Like, hey, let's take this negative and embrace it into a positive. I get that. I still don't think it's good, but am I really going to tell black people that they shouldn't say this word that is so central to their culture? No. No, I don't like hearing black people calling themselves that as though it's empowering the same way I don't like hearing women call themselves bitches and whores as though that's empowering, which is ironically a consequence of black pop culture, which we'll talk more about in a second. But the point is that legally speaking, can you say the N-word? Yes. Should you say the N-word? I don't see a reason why anyone should. And this might sound weird, but the only reason that white people are even saying the N-word anymore is because of black people. Because black people dominate pop culture, especially music, which they always have, especially considering how they influence rock music. That's actually my take on control of the music industry. I think that white people dominated music throughout the latter half of the 20th century. And then when rap music started to become more popular in the mid-2000s, white people got really sad. And that's why we started making the like edgy emo rock music. And then rap music became the most popular and white people didn't know what to do. And I think that when we came back with dubstep in the early 2010s, that was like the musical equivalent of just yourself after you die, you know? Like, you can laugh, but that's accurate. Dubstep, that was like, that was our Hail Mary. But aside from that, this is actually a problem because black people dominate pop culture and rap music in particular just spams the N-word. And white kids really like rap music. And so when they say that word, it's not because they're trying to be racist. It's because they're trying to participate in the popular culture. And this warrants the question, should simply saying the N-word, just uttering it into the void, should that result in your life being ruined? No, it shouldn't. So let's talk about this girl again. So like four years ago, she gets her learner's permit. She's excited. She sends a video to her friend like, I can drive N-word. And somehow this video ends up getting circulated around the school. This kid who looks like exactly the type of kid that would do something like this, he saves the video just waiting for an opportunity to release it to get her canceled. So fast forward to now, during all the Black Lives Matter activity that stopped for some reason right after the election, this girl's posting on social media in support of the protests, and this kid responds basically like, well, how dare you support the idea that Black Lives Matter if you said the N-word once to a presumably white friend of yours? And then he posts the video. Immediately, she gets canceled. She's disinvited from her university, which at the time was the national champion for cheer, which is something that she was going to participate in. Her life is totally screwed because she said the N-word. Not that she called the black person the N-word, not that she said it in front of black people, but that she said it in a private video to a friend of hers. And that's not why she should have been canceled. She should have been canceled because white women try to appropriate black vernacular because they think it's cool and it's f***ing cringe. That's why she should have been canceled. White women listen to black women speak and go, ooh, hee hee, they talk funny. I want to try. Y'all need to stop. It do be like that sometimes. Hee hee, I'm fun. I get to play too. And it's like, yeah, I'm glad she got expelled because she tried to co-op something that doesn't involve her and she made it cringe. But that being said, that's not why she was canceled. And so I'll still defend her. But the lesson to be learned is that you can never appease the mob. This girl followed the trends on social media, probably due to social pressure, but still, it didn't matter. Someone still tried to ruin her because of a video that was made four years ago in which she said the N-word, and so nothing matters. Given that the mob will never back down and that you can never appease them, you may as well stand up to them because eventually they'll come for you too. And it just goes to show how much of a joke this country is, where the worst offense that you can commit is saying a word. Not saying it to someone in hatred, just simply saying it. If you do that, the New York Times will publish a piece about you in which they implicitly celebrate the fact that you were canceled. And I'm gonna get a lot of crap for just making this video. We're not even saying the word. We're just talking about it. But you can't even talk about it, let alone say it. If you simply say the word, it's like a cheat code. It's like activating the six star cheat code in GTA 4, like you're done, you're done. And speaking very frankly, we all know that it's not even that big of a deal. Like I'm not talking about harassing someone. I'm not talking about calling someone a name, but you can literally have your life ruined for just saying the word now. And the reason for that is that it's a virtue signal. To get angry about the N-word being used in completely inconsequential circumstances is a virtue signal. It's to say, what? You said the N-word? I'm so passionate and convicted and educated and concerned about how bad that is. Arr, I'm going to ruin your life now. That's really like, that's all that is. That's why you'll never see anybody get mad about this without an audience, whether that's social media, whether that's a classroom, it doesn't matter. If you're a white person in a room with only one other person and that person happens to be black and you're like rapping a song to yourself and you happen to say the N-word, nothing is going to happen to you. Worst case scenario, they're like, hey man, that's disrespectful. But if you run that same scenario back in a crowd of people, you'll probably get beaten up because it's a virtue signal. And 
and it's an offense whose punishment is limited only by the extent to which the mob is willing to go. Find me an equal example where any response would be universally permitted. Find me an example where someone could just say something and the social media consensus would be that that person got what they deserved, whether that's just getting beat up or even getting killed. It doesn't exist. And the Jarheads example actually makes more sense than the anti-racism example. Like, it makes more sense to say, hey, you can't say the N-word because you're not a part of this, rather than to say, well, you can't say the N-word because that's racist, right? But even then, none of that warrants violence. And how is that not hypocritical in the first place? Like, for you to dominate the music industry in a predominantly white country, and for you to produce music with those types of words in it, like, are white people expected to consume that media differently than black people? We saw something like this happen at a Kendrick Lamar concert. This girl was kicked off stage and booed for simply rapping the song. How is it not racist to say, you can't say this word because you're white, and if you do, we're going to ruin your life and maybe hurt you? How is that not the definition of racism? And even if we go with a new definition of racism, being prejudice and power instead of just prejudice, like let's not act like white people having more people that look like them in Congress means that they have more power. If you even think we said the N-word, you can beat the crap out of us and we'll end up refusing to press charges and apologizing to you. This girl said the N-word in a private video, someone saved it for years, and then in a matter of two days ruined her life with the support of thousands of people in the mainstream media. That's power. That's real power. Which means that if you're prejudiced towards white people by saying that they're not allowed to rap to the same music as you, and you've also got that type of power, boom, you're the real racist. I have defeated you. Pack it up. White people can't be racist. It's impossible. It's impossible. Our countries are the most tolerant and accepting countries on the planet. We have the lowest in-group preference. We're just not racist. We just don't have it in us. And now even gay people, they're trying to say, well, you can't say our slur if you're not gay too, which is just them yet again trying to capitalize on the momentum of black movements. Like, are we really supposed to pretend that the plight of the homosexual has been equal to the plight of the black American in this country? No. No, not even remotely close, but yeah. That's the take on that. Basically, the only reason anyone cares about the N-word is to virtue signal. 99% of the time, white people say it is just to try to emulate black culture, which is cringe, but not worthy of ruining their lives. Verbal self-degradation is not empowering, and you will never appease the mob. But that being said, there is a solution to this. It's like in Fight Club, when they erase the debt, everyone's back to zero, everyone's equal. We just need to, everyone record a video of themselves saying the N-word and post it online. It's the only way that we can move forward as a country. So any white liberals watching, you guys go ahead, go first. Me and the boys are gonna hang back for a second so we don't steal a spotlight since you know we just got into this whole social justice thing. Whereas you guys have been at it for years, doing great work. So yeah, white liberals, we need to understand that we're all equally guilty and racist. And the only way to do that is all of us posting a video of ourselves saying the N-word. So again, you guys get started, me and the boys will catch up and then the mob will dissolve and the country will finally be healed. Very epic. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so that you are notified when I post, and of course, share the video with a friend. Very epic, New Year's Eve mode. Very epic. You guys gotta be careful, you know? On New Year's, on New Year's Eve, when, when girls text you and they're like, hey, what are you doing tonight? Hey, you should come over. Hey, any plans? You gotta be careful. They're just trying to take advantage of you. That's what that means. You think, you think you're just going over to their house you know, to play Mario Kart or whatever, to watch the ball drop or, you know, but then, you know, 1159, they start giving you eyes and you're like, I don't know what you think is going to happen, but I did not consent to this. I consented to, to Mario Kart. I consented to ping pong or whatever. Got to be careful. Got to stay sharp. Got to stay sharp. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. We'll see you next year. Ka-chow.